Hello, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz where we are promoting jazz through telling the stories. Today, we are presenting part one of our two part interview with the great pianist, keyboardist, producer, engineer, composer, and educator, Mr. Vince Evans. We ask you to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so we can let you know when we are posting another video or going live. We also ask you to donate to our Cash App in order to support the channel and help us to produce future videos. Our Cash App is Dollar Sign Jazzology 101. That's Dollar Sign Jazzology 101. Enjoy the video. Hi, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is A Conversation in Jazz. Today, I'm honored to have someone who is not only an incredible musician, pianist, keyboardist, producer, engineer, educator, composer, arranger, but he is also a musician. That is, a musician and a magician. And he's become quite the chef. <laughs> Please welcome my good friend and big brother, Mr. Vince Evans. Brother Vince, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. How you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing wonderful, man. I'm glad to have you on our show. Man, I'm honored to be here. Uh, we go back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're going to talk. It took you so long to put me on here, man. You done, <laughs> you done run out of people, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, man, <laughs> where do we start? I don't know, man. But we go way back. We're going to learn some things about you that we don't know. Good. I'm, I'm, I might learn some things, yeah. too. <laughs> well, my first question is, what is, the, what is it like being Vince Evans? Wonderful. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it works good for me. It might not work for everybody, but yeah. it worked for me. Uh, yeah, but you, you I'm are- having a good time, you are, Yeah, you are, uh, you are unique, I would say. A unique kind of person, man. And I remember just the first time I met you, you were just unique. <laughs> and so I'm sure it didn't- start when I met you, so. No, well, I've, I've enjoyed a lot of freedoms that a lot of people don't have, you know, and yeah. I've been real happy for a long time, so. Yeah, you know, yeah so we're going to go, we're going <laughs> we to go back, we're going to go back. How were you as a child? You had to ask my mama that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I learned from my, I'm the youngest in the family, so I learned from my siblings. Okay, how many siblings you had? I've got three. I've got okay. an older sister. I've got two older sisters and an older brother. So I met I met one two siblings. I met a a, 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 a Norman. Yeah. And Kim. Yes. And yeah. the other sibling. The other one is Tony. Tony. I haven't yeah. met Tony. Yeah. She she's older and she she doesn't come out to the gigs that much. You might meet her. Okay. You know. Yeah. But she doesn't come out that much. You know. And she's not that involved in music. Yeah. Whereas Kim and I work together in the church, and my brother still plays and all yeah. that. So yeah. we have more of that musical connection. With, okay. You know. Your brother plays too. Oh yeah. Woo! You never heard him sit in it. He probably was too scared, man. Man, he he plays stride piano, man. He really he'll tear you up, man. He he stopped for about. 20 years, 20, 30 wow. years. And yeah, then he came, he called me. I was never so happy. He called me, said, man, I'm going to get back into playing again, man. Let me, let me borrow <laughs> some of your books. Yeah. So I, I gave him my books. Man, I went over his house two weeks later, man. Give me my books back, <laughs> man. He was killing it, man. Really? Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. We're going to talk about your siblings. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, man. So you're the baby. Yeah. I think the creativeness began in me trying to figure out how I can get away with stuff. Because, you know, I was being a young as I sit back yeah, going, yeah, no, nah, yeah. that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that yeah, ain't going to work. I ain't going to try that. <laughs> so, so were you spoiled? Yeah, of course. Really? Yeah, I was the baby. What you, wow. What you think? See, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the oldest, so I don't... So I, I'm on the other extreme of it. Oh, okay. I'm the one that, well, I'm, the I'm one sorry. That, yeah. <laughs> Use the test pattern. Oh, my God, man. See, they went through them, and then after they got to me, they said, well, we can't do no better yeah. now. We're going to stop right there. We're perfection. Oh, man. So were you were you born in D.C.? Yeah, Freedman's Hospital. Really? Yep. So did you come up in D.C.? Like, yeah. Yeah, mainly a split between D.C. and Maryland. I'm, I'm half Gatonese. <laughs> So I have, uh, you know, which means don't let the tuxedo fool you. Yeah, got, got <laughs> I've gotten um, 
we came up in Northeast on, on, on our street, Minnesota Avenue. Really? Yeah. I yeah, didn't yeah. know that, man. Mm-hmm. There's a little there's a little house. The house is still there where we used to live, right really? on the corner of our street in Minnesota. Man, what was it like coming up in DC, like at the time you came up? As a, you mean as a child? As like, a kid, yeah. Up till we got, but I was so happy when we got to Maryland because the <laughs> kids was rough in DC, man, in yeah. the Northeast, man. Yeah. I got beat anytime I came off my porch. Really? Yeah, man. Because I looked like a girl till I was, you know, middle <laughs> aged because I had curly hair. Yeah, yeah. It was reddish. You know, I looked like a girl. There was nothing but <laughs> And then look, we used, man. Every every game we played in the neighborhood was like a a a violent. You know, alternative to a regular game. You know, mm-hmm. regular people had hide and go seek. We had bread and butter. Wow. But what's bread and bread, bread and butter? Well, it's hide and go seek with a twist. There's a switch involved. You know, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. if you don't, you yeah, don't, yeah, the yeah. last one get the don't get the base, get beat with the switch. Wow. You know, other people play horse. We yeah. played twenty five ass on the pole. <laughs> you say ass? We, we played. We played. Uh, we we played. Uh, Games where you know the lo- the loser got to line up, put his butt out, and wow. everybody take turns. Yeah. And, ch- and why yeah. are we trying to hurt each? Why does yeah. everything yeah. end in such fun yeah. and violence? Yeah, we made stick guns, man. Yeah, it was it was different. You, you yeah. too young. You don't know about stick guns. No, I don't know about stick guns. But nah, I, know about man, that we... other, I know about that other stuff you talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Before they had the pull top caps. Okay. They stay on the can. Uh-huh. The street was just littered with those little pop things, right? The, the the flip top things. Right? Yeah, we used to put tar in them. We used to play. You remember the tops on the milk? We used to put tar in them and play like uh, call it. We used to uh, draw something in the middle of the street. Yeah, no, nah, that that ain't violent enough. No, nah, <laughs> we, we we get a get a two by four uh-huh. and get a couple of nails and nail some rubber bands on one end and take one of Mama's spring loaded clothes pins. And nail that on the other end, and you take that thing, you stick it in there, you pull it back on the thing, cock it in there, and shoot oh. somebody in the eye with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to do that with the pin. Yeah, yeah we yeah, had yeah. little gangs and stuff. Little, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was... Yeah, we were creative, yeah. we were creative uh, in the hood. Yeah, so yeah. anything that involved, like, be to my own, I ain't going to get hurt, I ain't going to get beat up, I ain't going to get pushed in the doo-doo and all that, Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll practice. Were I'm you home. different, like, as a kid, were you different than, like, most of the other kids? I don't think so. No? No. Nah. Okay. Couldn't fight though. I was just too emotional to fight. Really? Yeah. So then my my parents put me in karate school. <laughs> that didn't solve anything. Remember them, remember them jewelry commercials? Yeah. Nobody bothers me. Nobody bothers me too. <laughs> they should have put the camera on me. I'm like everybody bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. And then I got my butt whipped twice as much because they heard I'm taking. I heard you taking karate lessons, so I get it, it, challenged, yeah, right? Yeah, wow. Then I gotta go drive somewhere and put on gear and go get beat up in the gym. <laughs> they ain't make no sense at all. <laughs> wow, man, that's cool. Yeah, well, you know, I was a short cat, so I always had to. What do you mean was? <laughs> you, you ain't grown with yeah, two inches yeah. since I know it. <laughs> so you know how they. They always tried to test me, but I was quick with the hands. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 you know, I had to, you know, don't let this smile fool you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, you come from a musical family? Yes, absolutely. My mother took voice lessons and my brother and sister, all, we all took lessons from this guy named Professor Jones. Mm-hmm. Lived right down the street from the church. You could walk to his house. Uh-huh. And he had an organ in there, had a couple, couple pianos, piano downstairs, piano upstairs. He was... Very well accomplished, you wow. know. And he taught us to read and write, taught us theory, and made us play. My sister was playing rock minor now when she What's was 15 name? years old. Professor Herbert Jones. Herbert Jones. Yeah, he's okay. passed on now, but he lived into his 90s. Okay. So y'all were taking lessons? Oh, yeah, all the time. So all of us was piano lessons. your first instrument? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, piano and then also violin. I played violin. Oh, wow. You know. And then later I, I got into to marimba and timpani and, yeah. you know. Stuff One thing like I like that. about you, man, is that you, you some people, and I'm like that. I think that's why we connect. You never let the kid in you die. Oh, man. You know, I don't kid, know nobody laugh yeah, like yeah, you, man. Yeah, yeah, Remember when you yeah, came yeah, over my house, you played that pinball machine for the first time? Yeah. You couldn't play worth a damn, but you yeah. sure was having fun, yeah. man. Oh, like, my. I'm yeah. going to get you now. I'm going to get you now. Oh, where you going? Where you going? I'm like, yeah. uh, Dude, yeah. you're not in control. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you me, have fun doing it. You know why? Because as a kid, I had to learn how to lose. And once I learned how to lose, you know, I could appreciate when I won. And well, when you come about, to my house, you real good. You yeah. got real good at that. 
<laughs> and we're gonna talk about that uh, when we were in Africa and you was kicking my butt in, uh, in chest oh, and I won that boy. one game. <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't remember that. <laughs> So yeah, but but I like that about you, man. Uh, uh, you, you, the kid in you, like that curiosity, like you're always oh yeah, uh, learn, you know, curious about things, and uh, and so that that's that's one thing I noticed about you, man, and and which is great, man. So that's that's something people need to do, man. Let that kid like live in them, cause you know we grow up and think we we trying to you know do all that. Sure, that's why when we was over in Lagos, remember remember that stuff with the cigarette. The yeah. dudes in Legos, I love messing them up with yeah. that, with the magic stuff. We go, we don't want to give it away man, right woo! now, but we gonna talk about the African. We messed them people up. Yeah. Didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> and you was over there like a little kid. Uh oh, oh. get him, man, get him, sick him. Man, I was like, I, I was like the dog. Oh my sick god. <laughs> as a, but as a kid, right? Were you? Do you think you were born with certain natural gifts, or were you? Did you just? Were you all just a hard worker? I don't know if it, I, don't, I, I think that uh, I'm more so a product of my environment. I didn't have any choice in who my siblings were, where I grew up, and what I had. But because everybody else played an instrument in my house, me learning how to play piano was like learning how to use a knife and fork. It wasn't anything, and I enjoyed doing it, so it's not really work in that sense. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like a kid playing in, playing in an amusement park all day. They haven't had anything to eat. You can't tell them that they're hungry and they're tired and, they, yeah, and that yeah. they've been working all day because they're having so much fun. Yeah. So I can't really look at it like work because I really enjoyed the journey and still do. I'm still yeah. practicing and still learning. And, you still and I'll play. Oh, yeah, man. I'll play <laughs> something that I've been working on. It'll come out and I'll, <laughs> and I, you know, yeah, I'll be like, fine. oh, man, that's cute. You know, and, find, and still yeah. find stuff. So did music come easy for you? Oh yeah, everything came easy for me. Anything I want to do is easy for me. That I'm interested in. That's what I'm saying. In. You, there's some people, man. I, like yeah. I said, you just, I gotta work for mine. <laughs> but I mean, it's work. But if you enjoy, if you're really yeah, interested process, in it and you're yeah. in it, you don't mind. You don't. The, you don't mind doing the work. You know. Yeah. And it's not work. It's just like it. It comes. But I think not being a stranger to discipline, realizing that things take time. Gotcha. And that's the same thing in magic and music. All the, the instruments I've learned to play. I mean, during COVID, I've learned another instrument, as you as you yeah, know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I started start doing gigs and taking gigs and stuff. Wow. And, and yeah. It didn't take that that long because okay, I know I need, to get, this, I need to get this. Yeah. And then and, and he he studying piano with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We trying to outdo Y'all each other. It. Yeah. And who can learn more? And I, <laughs> I think we about neck and neck. Yeah. Some weeks I think. I think I'm more overloaded than him, and then I, so I try to overload him, and I think he's winning right now. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> well, you have the kind of mind that, and I, because I watch, you know, you have the kind of mind that could comprehend complex information and, and, and really, like, you can read a manual, you know, and really digest it and understand it. Yeah. Is, you know, now, is that just a byproduct of just, over the over years of doing it or hard work or or do you think some things are innate or a little bit of both probably a little bit of both but uh -huh. my training certainly helped you okay. know you know when I went to went to Berkeley you know I got to music production and engineering and getting into there it's a science. You need to learn learn about absorption coefficients. You need to learn about the properties of acoustic instruments. Mm -hmm. You have to learn. Um, and then you have to learn to read schematic diagrams to be able to see well is this a post you know a post fader feed or a pre fader feed or what's mm -hmm. what's going where you know where the amplifiers are you have to learn to read that kind of stuff so yeah. I was trained uh, in that thing you know and you have a lot of patience right yeah I do yeah I have a lot of patience yeah maybe and that's maybe that's where I fall short because I be trying to you know I got to slow myself down. <laughs> I had a voice lesson one time with, with my teacher. He's passed on now, Eddie Jackson. Mm -hmm. And we were working on some stuff. And he's all up there in the top of his tenor range. Beautiful sound. And when I went to do it, he was like, yes, yes, that's it, that's it. And I was just shaking my head. He said, boy, what you shaking your head for? I said, man, mine doesn't sound like yours. He closed the piano and said, he said, look, son, you know, I'm 70-something years old. I've been doing this longer than you've been alive. Mm. Give me one reason why yours should sound like mine. Wow. And I was like, good part. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, makes, okay. yeah. wow. You yeah. know, so it takes time. Yeah, it takes yeah. time. But you got to get a start, get mm -hmm. your foot in it. So why'd you choose piano, or was it? Did, did someone choose it for it you? It was there. 
Y'all had a piano in the house? Yeah, if it was a flute, I'd be playing flute. <laughs> you know, if, was, if we ain't had nothing, I'd be beating pots and pans. I mean, that's that's what was there. The, we still have that family instrument, the piano, the family piano. Everybody would gather around the piano, wow. and all of us played, and all of us sang and sang in choirs and was in church and all that. So we get together, fight over part. That's my part. You don't tell me my part. That's my note. Oh, wow. It ain't your note. That's yeah. my note. Yeah. Well, I got to play for mama. You play for mama this week because yeah. you know the song better. No, I don't. You know. It was so was there a lot of, of you, had, you came up in a lot of love. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody get that. No, <laughs> of course not. Yeah, you can't. I mean, and, it, and it really. I still got it, too. My yeah. parents are still here. Yeah. And it's still, and my, all, all my family, my siblings yeah. are still here. So. And I, I try to, t you know, that's the solution. It's that love, like, especially in families, man, because you got family with, you know, you got sibling rivalry and they, they you know, and they, oh, yeah. and they don't support each other and, it, you know. And I see your siblings, man, the, the two, uh, Kim and, and yeah, Norman, yeah, yeah. and they come out and support you. Oh, man, yeah, no, and, we, we and, tight. Yeah. 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 And it's, so that's, you came up in that. Yeah, of course. Of course. Wow. And my brother's a very learned man. I mean, he yeah. he went to Brown and he yeah, you, he's yeah. a top, he, you know, you don't want to get in a fight in the courtroom with him. You know, he's learned, and he learned <laughs> from the best. Yeah. And he's, a, he's one to give you one or two words that are just, you know, you don't even know your throat cut. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, wow. you know, yeah. I, everything that I've learned has been an inheritance of coming up under him and getting his hand-me-downs because he's into this hobby for six months. If you're going to get into something three weeks in, he's got every trade magazine on it, everything that's on He's done all the research. This is pre-internet, not where you just hit a couple buttons yeah, yeah, yeah. and find out who yeah. likes what. No, he'll just get it all, mm -hmm. get into it, and then get saturated and then go to something else and then I'd get that last thing. You know, so <laughs> is that something he got from your dad or your mom, or or or, or is that something he kind of just was part Probably of? Probably him, but my dad's that way too. I mean, okay. my dad is a masonry contractor. Didn't you tell me your dad yeah. built the house or something? Yeah, my built built many houses. He worked on Gaylord. He did he did the brickwork, the, oh, all wow. the stonework on Gaylord. He come from good stock. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, my beautiful. dad, my dad built a, built our house, and he built my sister's house, and he built uh, a lot of churches and commercial buildings and fire wow. stations, and yeah. you know, really, beautiful, really man. gorgeous brickwork. And I mean, we were the Jeffersons before the Jeffersons, man. Because <laughs> our house got stuff in it that mm -hmm. you don't see, you don't see it. even today when you bring contracts over, they're like. Whoa, where you get this? They they don't know what to do because they don't see this in houses. You know, this was for you know yeah. for the rich folks wow. in Georgetown and stuff. But yeah. it's like, nah, I put them in there. I put them in my house. Wow, you know. So as a kid, did you know that you were going to pursue music as yeah. a life passion? Yeah, yeah. You knew that as a kid. Yeah. When I was, you said your siblings were into music, but. You, you, you chose yeah, but to. I'm gonna tell you the thing. The, the thing that really got me was my aunt and my aunt May had a rest home. Uh -huh. She had a rest home in part of her house across the street from my mom's family house in North Carolina. And from a very early age, you know, we go down there because that's my mom's home. You know, we go down there, we be down there, and nothing to do down there but play with the June bugs and, <laughs> and crickets. And, yeah, you know, stuff like that. And if left in a room with the every day, you just seeing suffering and people left alone, just left to die by this, by the not getting many visitations, mm -hmm. not really engaging with each other. People just sit in the catatonic state for hours and hours. And if left in a room with them for five minutes, I couldn't have a conversation with them. Who, who you're eight? Who you? What are, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. But they bring that piano in there before my feet could reach the pedals. I start planking out. What a friend we have in Jesus, or Amazing Grace, or anything, any of those things. Wow. Suddenly, you see them start to straighten up. You see them start to want to feed themselves. Wow. You see them start to cry. You see them start to mm. laugh. Yeah. They say, come over here, boy, and let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. You know, And I realized then, man, you can move people without physically touching them. Mm. And you don't have to know anything about their background. You can speak different languages. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how much money you made, how smart you think you are, mm -hmm. how old you are, how young you are. Yeah. You, we both just enjoying this pleasing sound right now. Wow. And to be able to manipulate that, you know, for... The good for the common good. I mean, you played the nursing home gigs yeah, and seen the people yeah. get out the wheelchair, yeah, yeah, and they forget that they can, that they ain't supposed to be out the wheelchair. Yeah, man, shoot. And when we play at Westminster, you get that feeling, man. Like, it's, and I know you know it's funny when we. I noticed that you have a love when we play at Westminster, and it's because mm -hmm. of the people, and and that sense of uh, 
that whatever sure and, and yeah that's that's and, all I mean and, and, and bringing the music back to to its roots and where it came from it's a community thing it's yeah. an us thing yeah. it's not a y'all are over here yeah. and we're on the stage yeah. and you got your cognac and yeah. you're just sipping <laughs> and you're, oh that's yeah. good yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know we yeah. don't come from that it's like that's right boom, tch, boom. Yeah. <laughs> you know once you hear that everybody yeah. okay yeah. it's a party yeah. Yeah. you know if they dance it's not like move out the way we're performing it's like you you know you see me oh, they, they dancing bring them up yeah. here yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Bring them up here, you know. Yeah, man. Let it be a part of the celebration too. So did you did you come up in the church? Of course, yeah. Did you play in the church? Oh, like, all kinds of churches. I've been kicked out of a lot of churches, man. <laughs> all different styles. You said you've been kicked out. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, yeah. it always reaches a point yeah. we, it was, okay. where, you know, serving God versus commerce versus being a businessman yeah. versus yeah. all yeah. of this. You know, if you uh, for you know, the Lord. if they yeah, they, oh, they, 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 they feel that you're anointed. They're, yeah. You're anointed by the Lord, so we ain't got to pay you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They pay the electrician, the painter, the yeah. person to yeah. put the floor in, yeah. everything else. But something that they need every week and that the music that the service thrives on, they don't want to pay for that. Mm -hmm. You know? It's mm -hmm. like, you know. Or just... Um, Sometimes, you know, posturing, you know, well, I'm the minister, so when I'm speaking, you're supposed to be on the edge of your seat and look attentive and say amen every yeah, yeah, once yeah, in a while yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that. And yeah. it's like, man, you know, yeah, yeah. This, if I disappear, I mean, I've gotten into so many fights and yeah. different things <laughs> with different churches for various reasons, all stupid. Yeah. But, you know, going into, a, into most church situations, somebody told me... Um, I think it was Wes Biles. I was talking to Wes. He uh -huh. said he was playing the gig, and the cat came out and told him the gig was up, and he was going to go in, and he going to go in and fight for his money and this, that, and the oh, other. Yeah, and the yeah, older yeah, season yeah, cat yeah. told him, look here, son, yeah. I haven't played a gig yet that didn't end. You know, like, wow. yeah, and yeah. even life itself, we ain't here but for a minute. Yeah, yeah. you know, let's let's keep it moving and go see what the next journey brings. See what exactly. the next church. Maybe they, maybe they might pay me more, appreciate me more over here mm -hmm. or over there or whatever. But but how did how did and your music, and when, when people when I hear you, it mm -hmm. has like three hundred and sixty degrees of the black experience. In it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I've been yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about you, 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 and then you can go into the, the the European classical thing. But I mean, like, you definitely have like, you know, all the elements of the African American experience in in your music. Yeah, and still uh, and still gathering more, still yeah, gathering yeah, more. Yeah. You know, wow. the more I learn, I mean, you know, I went to, I was in Africa and, and went and studied with Balladumbia on, on Balafone. Mm. And I studied on Mbira Zavazimu with the cats in South Africa. Wow. And the, the stuff that we did in yeah, Africa yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. And all of these experiences and, and having this, again, I wouldn't have the openness to listen to all of these musics and appreciate all different genres of music if I didn't come up in the environment. My brother didn't have his record collection that he had because he may be listening to Miles Davis on one day and Bob Marley on another day. And, you know. Yeah. That's that's why I asked you. Jackson another day or <laughs> Billy Preston, all of that. We listen to all of that. That's man. why I asked you, what is it like being Vince Evans? <laughs> I've enjoyed myself, yeah, man. I, I've enjoyed hey, myself. It's a rhetorical question, you know. Yeah, but, I, you know, um, yeah, man. That's. that's uh, I mean, I've had I've had a wonderful life, man. You know, and I'm I'm enjoying every bit. I could have been gone any time, and I've been in a lot of some treacherous situations where any time I had to go, I could say, yeah. I'm, I'm full. I'm, I'm, wow. I've, I've had I've done a lot. So do I'm you have the, a lot. Do you have as do you have the same passion for music and what you do as you had when you were a kid? Oh, more so, cause I know more. Okay. Yeah, more so. Yeah. Wow. Cause you know, a question leads to another another question. You ever seen a kid? Or, yeah, yeah. Well, why is the sky blue? Yeah. Cause it is. Well, why is it? <laughs> well, because God made the sky. Well, if He made the sky, every question, the questions never end. So, uh -huh. music is like that. It's like you know, I I went to Berkeley, and thought I knew a whole lot of stuff, and was writing a book and all this kind of stuff. And then you know, then I met Barry Harris. He stopped me in my tracks. You know, when I met Barry, I had graduated from Berkeley 10, 20 years yeah. ago and had been all over the road traveling and writing a book. And Barry's like, hold up. <laughs> Let me show you how to play. I Let me show yeah, you. Yeah. You know, and then I had to stop and reinvent all that stuff. Mm -hmm. my, my technique, my the way I looked at a lot of stuff we gonna changed. Talk, yeah, we're going to talk about Barry. Yeah, uh, and, and, it might, and it changed again since then. And it's going to keep on changing. And it's, wow. I, yeah. I don't, I don't care. That's the only changing. constant. That's what makes it. Yeah. And 
I'm always an either and person. It's not either or. It's not like this or that. It's like, okay, this is what these people like. And when I'm around these kind of people, then that's the kind mm -hmm. of way I talk. When I'm mm -hmm. around those kind of people, that's the way I talk. So you're enjoying this ride called life? Yeah. <laughs> if I wasn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I don't think there's a choice, is it? He said, yeah. Yeah, man. Why would you ask such a question? Yeah. I mean, no. I might feel different if I had ailments or I was in pain or had bad physical condition. That might be coming. I don't know, but I haven't had it. You know, I don't. I'm not. I'm not on any medications, and yeah. I don't have any dependencies and all that. Got to yeah. There's nothing in my life that I'm like feel like I gotta have. Gotcha. It's like if, if anything is lacking, I got so much of so many things that yeah. I'm all right. You mentioned that uh, you you also you you play violin. Yeah, yeah. And why'd you put that down? Well, I got bigger and my fingers got fatter and the, and the violin didn't. <laughs> so, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I still know where all the notes are and I yeah. still have my violin and I can play. I think I may have given it to somebody, but I may get another one at some mm -hmm. point. But I understand the articulations. I understand, you know, the bowing and I understand. I know where the notes are and I can, I can play. I'm, when you haven't played in a long time, mm -hmm. you know your intonation is going to suffer. But one thing I always had problem with was the vibrato. Something about turning my hand this way yeah. and doing this this way. Uh -huh. You know, when I yeah. play guitar, I'm okay, and I can even do it on guitar. But on violin, yeah. for some reason, <laughs> get that that thing always was one thing that always bothered me. And it's such an expressive part of the instrument. Yeah. If you don't have vibrato, even in synthesizer sounds, when I play a, a synth sound. I come from Donald Blackman and Bernard Wright and and, wow. and and those kind of cats, you know? And their vibrato was their whole sound. If you ain't had no vibrato, them notes didn't matter. It wasn't like <laughs> some Jan Hammer stuff where you just... The vibrato, it was so much expressiveness in the vibrato. So I feel like if I don't have a vibrato... Yeah. Uh, wow. Do you remember your first gig? Yeah, of course. What, what was that? You mean... Like... like after well... It's it's mixed. You don't really count the church gigs, okay? Because I came up in church. Yeah. I went to church Sunday school. Too much church all the time. Yeah. yeah. So me playing in church, you know, yeah. and then them paying me or paying yeah. my family, or whatever. Yeah. That that's always been there. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't really count that as a gig gig. You know what I mean? But um, like coming out of school and playing the gig professionally and yeah. all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, Wally's Cafe, man. Wow. Wallace Cafe. Is that in DC? Was that no, in DC? no, in Boston. In That's Boston, a very okay, famous, in Berkeley. We're going famous, to talk, okay. famous um, spot on Mass Avenue, Massachusetts Avenue, uh, and, Tre wow. and Tremont Street in um, in Boston. And it was walking distance from Berkeley, so wow. all the Berkeley cats would go down there and cut uh -huh. their teeth, you know. <laughs> and you 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 see anybody down there? Mark Whitfield. I was in in there with Mark Whitfield, yeah. and and you know a lot of these kind of cats, man, wow. and Cleve Guyton. Saxmo Gates, wow. all these cats would be down there slinging, you know, wow, that was yeah. the thing. And then I went down there and they, the piano was all beat up and all it had was an organ and half them notes didn't work. You know, you just <laughs> had to make it work. Yeah, yeah. you made to make it do what it do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, but those people knew music and they knew swing. Yeah. Do you, you know? remember when you first heard jazz? Music? Yes. Yes. Really? Well, I mean, you know, you you get introduced to the corny jazz music that you get from, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, junior high school jazz band and yeah, band yeah, camps and yeah. stuff like uh -huh. that. That I wouldn't really consider that yeah. authentic jazz. But I, I, most of my thing came from my brother's books again, because my brother's ten years my senior. Uh -huh. So, you know, when he, he was studying and had books, I pick up the books and look through them and then, you know, I had them John Mahegan books and all this kind of stuff. Those exposures. But in terms of listening to it, um you know, he had um, Coltrane's uh, the thing with with uh, Giant Steps, uh -huh. and he had uh, I mean and uh, do 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 my favorite my things, favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I meant I said say Giant Steps yeah. I meant my favorite things yeah um, that and that the record with Miles where he's playing my funny Valentine and I remember I first got my first real book and I was like man I'm getting a First, my Bible. <laughs> that I thought it was a Bible now, you know, Bible. We, we used to call them fake, fake books. Well, they really are. <laughs> and, they, they, and, Barry, and Barry say because they fake. Yeah. And they really are. A lot of the stuff in there, most yeah. of the stuff in there is wrong, yeah. but they don't know no better. So 
They put, that's what everybody plays. But anyways, that was my first style. I was so excited because I knew how to read a chord chart. I knew what all the symbols meant, uh -huh. you know, but I didn't know any of these songs. So I'm going through the book. There's like 500 songs in yeah. here, and I've never seen any of these songs. I'm looking, <laughs> and then I see my funny Valentine, like, wait, I've seen that before. Yeah. And I go through the album thing <laughs> and pull up. Miles Davis, all wow. right, man. I put that thing on the turntable, got my chart, it was ready, okay. And then Miles said, <laughs> and then I said, crane, crane, wrong. And then Miles said, boo, boo, boo. And I'm looking at the chart going, where is Miles? <laughs> That was my first experience, wow. and that's funny. Really trying to put those two things together. <laughs> now, did when you heard jazz, right? Mm -hmm. Did I mean? Did you? Did it resonate with you when you first heard it? Of course, because it's still church music. I always church yeah, you music heard the church from, in it. They from yeah, day yeah. day one. So yeah, wow. The church, the New Orleans thing, jazz, the swing. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know. So were you the type of? Uh, were you the type? Did you learn music? Like like you said, by okay, I learned the notes, I learned the chords, and I know the nomenclature and all that. Or did you like learn it from ear? Both. Oh, you did both. Both, absolutely both. Because you know, you for years you sit at the left hand of piano players and organ players in church. That's that's the that's the thing. You don't get your butt on the piano. You sit there and you watch what you know wow. what the other cats doing. And then I learned. That's how I learned. Wow. You know, learn piano and learn an organ from sitting there and watching them and how to act and when to play, when not to play, when wow. to bring it up, when to, you know. And at the same time, you know, having been steeped in classical music at the same time. So I'm both in, okay. in, in terms of that. But yeah. my sister, she, because she had me in a time when she was directing all these choirs and stuff and doing all this church this music. This is Kim? Yeah, Kim. Uh -huh. She, she... Used to go, we used to go to this music store, Battles Bookstore, mm -hmm. and they have all the sheet music that was available. If she mm -hmm. wanted to do a choir song that was out on the radio, mm -hmm. but the music wasn't available, mm -hmm. then I would listen to the ra I would listen to the song and I would write out piano music for her. Wow. So over the years, since I was like eight, nine years old, I've written piano music. So I learned to I profited off of that situation and learned to see what I hear and hear what I see. <laughs> but she's been handicapped by it unknowingly because she's been glued to the page now. Yeah. So yeah, if they yeah. play an augmented fifth and bar two of this song, every chorus you're gonna get that augmented fifth there. Yeah. <laughs> but it'll never go on another song that they didn't write it in there. So yeah. she never just learned that that's just something that you can do. Yeah. So yeah. she's really 50 years later learning that. Yeah. You me, know, and yeah. it's a struggle to undo so much yeah. crap we got in here because it's like yeah. we just we just fill in prescriptions it's like okay they want two of these okay put this yeah. put this yeah. finger here yeah, yeah. you yeah. know and then but that's not really yeah. creating or not be, being creative or not being a creative force as yeah. Barry would say so do you have this thing called perfect pitch or did you it is that? sometimes but okay. I don't depend on it okay hmm I think that's B flat that feel like B flat to me right now. Mm. <laughs> but I can't rely on it. Uh-huh. Wow. Ain't nobody give me that. I just named it just felt like it right now. But in another time, I'll be wrong about it. You know? But I, wow. I know I have it, but it's just that, that if I just don't think about it and I just yeah, do it. That that always amazes me, man. And then it's not like my relative pitch is really strong, so I don't need to know the sound of all 12 of them. If I know that's a B flat, whatever note you sing, I know its relationship to that mm -hmm. note. So Is that something you practice like when you when you're in school that you really Oh, definitely. On? Definitely. Okay. And that came through doing those solfege exercises and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And I I really encourage all my students to to learn the solfege system. Like I think I can hear E flat. Dee -da. Dee -da. Like I hear in your suite. Dee -da. Is that E flat? D. I mean, is that D da E flat to D? D da <laughs> oh, that's because of um, the, the, the in your, tune. Yeah. You get that in your head, so you in know your, from tune. Dee -da. Dee -da. Wow. Because. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Of the, you, you know it, because you know that's the, that's
Yeah. It would, <laughs> it would sound somehow wow. off to you. You know, it would just feel a little off. It, that amazing. I don't know. That's something recent I was able to, I'm able to right. do. I, I don't know where I got but that. But for me to go in and, and quantify and try to develop, for, for a while I was into that. Me and my boy Jeff Ramsey, John Ramsey, Jeff Ramsey, he, he died not too long ago. Mm-hmm. But we were like perfect pitch buddies. We we walk around each other and challenge. He had perfect pitch, you know. He challenged me every time he saw me, <laughs> you know, just off the cuff, you know. And I did the uh, who was the dude? Some dude had a course for a while with the. He started with F sharp and E flat because uh-huh. I like learning the different ideas about it. Like his idea was that F you should start with F sharp and E flat because F sharp kind of sounds like wham wham wham, uh-huh. but E flat sounds like wah wah wah. <laughs> So you, you learn wham, 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 wah, wah, wah. Let me walk around going, okay, wham, wham, wah, wah. And then he, he had a point. It's like if you hit that F sharp one, it has a certain twang to it. Really? That wow. even if you hit the other notes harder, you don't get that quite that nasal sound yeah. in it. Uh-huh. And the E flat sounds flat. And I started listening for the, the colors in the sound. But then it's clouded because all the instruments are different. And I, I I can't depend on it across all spectrum of sound. I ain't like Dwayne Adele, you drop a quarter. Yeah, that's yeah. that's E flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't have a use for that. Yeah, I got you. You know? It still amazes me, man. I mean, it just, you know, but uh, it ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, either something sounds good, and I don't, I don't overrate tone. I mean, if it's slightly out of tune or a little bit in a tune, that's, that's, that's life. It's like looking for per- perfect circles, you know. Yeah, it's like they yeah. really don't exist in nature. <laughs> it's a little bit off, or but it's well drawn, or yeah. it's, it's well assembled, or, or yeah. all of that. You look at that and not like yeah. trying to make everything perfect. So okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. I I think I know the answer. I'm sure you do if you about to ask. <laughs> it. But I may I may not I, I may get it wrong. But what artist had the most biggest impact on you? Period. Like above all the. Uh, and I think I know, but you I, probably don't. Okay, you probably don't. I th- okay, you, I told you it's gonna surprise me. Yeah, who do you think I would was gonna say? You're probably gonna say Barry Harris. Nope. Or you might say Stevie Wonder. Yeah, that's what I, I was. I was. I would think Stevie Wonder. Yeah, I mean, I I love Stevie Wonder, and I can say I love his music, but I can't say that he has the most impact on me. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I mean, really, I don't want to talk about Stevie too bad. People really get mad when you talk about Stevie, boy. But yeah, I really love Stevie's music, and I still do. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's timeless. Yeah. You know, but um, you, uh, it, it it might be Stevie as appreciating music as a listener. Yeah. But as a performer, as playing music, okay. it would definitely be people people probably wouldn't know, like Bernard Wright. Okay. You know? Wow. Um, uh, yeah. That's, you know, yeah. Donald Blackman. You know, okay. these cats really molded it because they had the things you speak about, about being well-versed and could go on a church gig and a bebop gig and have some bebop in them, but be able to play with Grover and not sound like a bebop yeah. cat and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had all of those things. Wow. All of those things. In wow. spades. So I strive, I was under them, striving gotcha. to be like them. Wow. You know, but then on top of that, there's things that they didn't know that I learned playing with Chuck Brown that mm-hmm. it's like, no, nah, those cats don't know these chords. They wouldn't do this. They'd never do this unless I had to show that to them. Wow. So then you just realize there's so many, we're so many worlds, man. Yeah. I want to talk about uh, your, your friend, Mr. Dave Dyson, David Dyson. Oh, I love talking about Dave. <laughs> And now, but I got another great. Because, uh, wait, wait, wait. Are you gonna have him on your show? I, well, he can come. I, I, we, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you're gonna have him, if you're gonna have him on your show, then I gotta be careful what I say because we always <laughs> up each other. Whatever. I, okay, you talk, we man, we've always had a rivalry, man, to yeah. outdo each other on anything. So if he if he know I yeah, said this, up, yeah. okay, wait till I get there. Wait till I get. I'm gonna tell him yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And that's been our upbringing, man. I yeah. come, I come over his mom's house. Accidentally scratch something a little bit at okay. their house. He said, "No, nah, I'm breaking something at your house then." <laughs> then he can break. No, nah, that you broke too much, man. That's it. Then I gotta go break something over his house. Well, let's go back. Where did you meet Dave? Where, where, where the two of you meet? And Dave is a great bass. bass he's a great bass player, yeah, and, and he's a great human being, man. Yeah, great, yeah, great yeah, friend really, yeah. and a dependable cat. Uh huh. Um, 
I met David. David couldn't stand me when I met him because I because I carried a briefcase and I had cowboy boots. He said he like he think that punk think he looked cute in them cowboy boots. And you had the curly hair. Of course, I, yeah. I've always had curly hair. <laughs> but when I when I met David, okay, there's a cat named Wayne Lindsay. Okay, okay. Wayne little, yeah, Wayne played little. with Frankie Beverly and Mays. Uh -huh. He played with Stevie and Whitney and all these uh -huh. things. And he moved to the West Coast. Yeah. And then he he's he's been like on American Idol and all those yeah. kind of shows mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He's a staple out there. Yeah. Him and Michael Bearden out there yeah. doing it up, you know. But when he moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, he heard about this young cat, this teenager that could read and could play a little bit. And he's like, well, who's this little whippersnapper? I don't, I, let, let me check him out, you know. Yeah. So then we got together, and it was Wayne Lindsay that taught me what a triangle meant on a major seven chord. Mm -hmm. I would watch Wayne Lindsay go do stuff with Billy Taylor and all that, and, you know, and, and it was like, man, how do you just play this? Well, I just do this. And I was just in awe. Hmm. You know, so I was steeped in, in that. And when Wayne left to go to, to California, I took over his church, which okay. was him and Way AME Church, you know, in, in, in Maryland, almost D.C. Now, how old are you about? How old? Probably 15-ish, okay. mm -hmm. 14, 15, 16, mm -hmm. somewhere in mm -hmm. there. You know, and David's parents brought him about, brought him by Oscar. Like, you know, my my son plays bass, and he really wants to play bass in the choir and all that. I'm like, mm -hmm. sure, bring bring him on. He had mm -hmm. had his had his bass and his amp and all that, and he came in, and, and we we. I say we he didn't like me, but that was just you know yeah that's just kids being kids, man. Mm -hmm. But we developed a relationship and a bond real early then that. It's like David and I playing in church together was just like a right and a left hand. Wow. You know, it's just, it's just like he, we both knew that repertoire really well. And okay. that was both both of our roots. We shared that root in common. Yeah. So uh, David wanted to go. He decided he wanted to study meteorology because he liked clouds and stuff. It would be a thunderstorm. He'd go out there and be in. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, then he decided, I said, man, why don't you come come, come to music school with me? Because I knew I was going to go to music school. I, the only way I, I found out, they had career, you know, they had those, used to have career day. Yeah, yeah. And they did that. I was in junior high school or wherever I was. And that was when they had the first machine, the first computers with the floppies. And I just typed in music school and only two schools came up, Juilliard and Berkeley. And wow. Juilliard didn't deal with jazz or pop. So at Berkeley it was. It was no was choice. Like, that's that's like, how I chose where to go to school. Wow. It wasn't, but this is what I wanted to do. These are the only two schools that came up. This one limited their stuff to, yeah, to yeah. this repertoire, so I chose that one. Okay. And then even when I got there, I tested out of a lot of stuff, so I had a lot of free electives. So mm -hmm. I could still get the education as an arranging major, a composition major, electronic synthesis oh, major, because wow. I took all those classes. Okay. But the only two places where you had to be in a major to get to the hip classes beyond an introduction was production and engineering or film scoring. So I okay. chose production and engineering, and that's how I became an engineer. Wow. But Dave and I, I remember when he came down, he said, my parents said I could go to Berkeley with you. Man, I could never been happier in my life. Wow. It's like, man, I, got, I get to go. To, to experience college with my best friend. So y'all graduated high school in the same year? No, yeah, but from different high schools. See, okay. that's the thing. We were we were together all the time in church, and we were together over each other's houses all the time. Okay, you know, you wow. know, I come play over his house. He come play over my house. I tear up his mama's house. He tear up my mama's <laughs> house. You know, we, and we play play with the Jamie Abelson records together yeah, and yeah. jam in the basement. I had wow. my Fender Rose. I had to, some pictures. I had to show you later. Uh -huh. You know, and, and I mean, we, we listened to records together and, and vibed together, went to concerts together, all that kind was of stuff. Was he living in D.C. Yeah. at the time? Or was yeah, he? New Carrollton. He's in New okay, Carrollton. Okay, I was yeah. in Lanham. Okay, okay. You know, not, not well, too yeah. far. Yeah. And then um, when, he, when we went to school together, we were roommates. Wow. Off and on in many different scenarios, in the dorms initially, mm -hmm. and then later we both lived in the place above where Walter Beasley. Did, did you have butt heads? Did you have butt heads? And every day, man, anytime. I mean, but not real, never real. Yeah, I mean, yeah. nothing really serious because yeah. you know I kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> And you don't want to get to get fighting with David, man. That boy yeah. has been studying martial arts and yeah. every fighting technique there is uh -huh. since I've known him. He walk around beating up air all the time. Now you, <laughs> now you, you know what's funny? You have a very your personality, and unless people really get to know your heart and who you are, they could be like, they could take you the wrong way. Yeah, you, you know, I know. you know, I know. And and did you did you did you go through that with Dave? 
No, okay. n- not except for the you know, except for the cowboy boots and the briefcase, <laughs> you know. Um, so y'all, y'all both, y'all both were graduated the same year, although y'all went to different high schools, right? Yeah, yeah, we graduated the same year, okay, so yeah. we both left and went to Boston together. Wow, beautiful, we we man. both had that experience together. Beautiful, man. you know, and then we. we you know, we would play. You know, I always was good at, at non-contact sports. I was never good at at football or soccer, or all that kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. my neighborhood was rough, man. Them kids kill you. They been yeah, playing yeah, tackle yeah. football on concrete, yeah, man. Yeah, I was yeah. like, nah. <laughs> You know, yeah. it, it's very hard to get hurt playing table tennis or yeah, shooting yeah, pool. Yeah. So that's what I did. I put my energies there. Even still now, I train table tennis. And you and Dave, y'all used to play game, video games? All the time. Man, you don't even, these young cats don't know nothing about gaming the way we, we be playing gaming. Wow. We had those old TV sets. <laughs> they had practice. They had With practice the tabletop rooms. tennis and Atari. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they, yeah, yeah. They had the practice room, the drum practice rooms, which were sound isolated, right? Mm-hmm. All the way down at the end of the hallway. Mm-hmm. We would take the rig, take all our stuff, make a few trips, all the way to the drum practice room so we could play all, all in the night. Wow. You know, three, four, five o'clock in the morning. We got class at nine o'clock. It's 4.30 in the morning. We, come on. And then all we had to do was get... Two steps from the door, and for us to say, say something else. Let's say, <laughs> you know, it's just one yeah. step, just ignorant. All right, one more game. Wow. And then we go, and we go That's set cool. it up again yeah. wow. and play again. We, we were all, we come up with things. We used to do, we, we made golf clubs. We made our own golf clubs out of cardboard tubes and stuff like that and a ping pong ball <laughs> and made a golf hole and would put it at the end of the hallway. Anything that there was a competition, if it was flipping a quarter, a quarter to see who could get closest to the wall, we had to outdo each so other. So how's your relationship now as, you know, y'all? Just the same. He still he comes over, plays pinball. Oh, really? Still okay. get beat the way he always got beat. <laughs> you know? We got, nickname, we got a nickname. I'm going to tell you a story. We got a nickname for him. He gonna probably get me for this, but, but we we call him Beatman, right? We call each other Beatman, you know, whoever Beatman. got beat. You the Beatman, no, you the Beatman. Okay. So when his daughter was born, I tried to get to her early. You know, he left to go to the bathroom for something. I was like, Leah, you know, Daddy's Beatman. Can you say Beatman? So, <laughs> and, and then it was her. She could barely talk. She said, Uh uh-uh, uh, Daddy told me you beat me. <laughs> You beat me. Daddy's not beat me. I'm that like, Dad, he let him. Yeah, but she... then I fixed him. We had a gig somewhere. I think we were out with Jonathan Butler. And one thing about David is you don't want to mess with him early in the morning when he's tired or late at night when he's tired. Uh-huh. He's not social. He, he really wants to be left alone. Gotcha. And okay. Mm-hmm. You know, so in the morning, he ain't got much sleep. He, <clears throat> He's annoyed at everything, walking around huffing and puffing, uh-huh. you know, he's coming in early. All he wants to do is get in that hotel room and, and get his rest on uh-huh. and, and be normal again. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I know this. So we're headed into this spot. And the limo driver that picks us up is young cat. You can tell, first day on the job, wrinkled shirt. Uh-huh. He, like he just put it on and, mm-hmm. you know, real, real, uh, Mr. Evans, Mr. Evans, sir, you know. And I said, and I caught him, but David was still behind me because he had to get his base. Uh, and he says, are you Mr. Evans? Yes, sir. Yes, he says, uh, um, I'm looking for Mr. Dyson, uh, David Dyson. I said, yes, yes, but man, please don't call him this. He likes to be addressed as Beatman. <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, oh, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. So then when David came up, of course, he had his base on his thing. And David, you know, he, he like this. The dude looked at me and said, Beatman? And David said, what? <laughs> you know, David ready to fight. David yeah. said, what? And the dude said, Mr. Beatman? <laughs> Boy, I fell out. <laughs> then he looked oh, over, he bad. saw me die, and he just said, oh, okay, okay. He just had to laugh, yeah, man. That's hilarious. It's hard to get a laugh out of David in yeah. the morning, man. Wow. Well, that got that cracked him up. I got him. He said, Mr. Beatman? <laughs> like, he made it worse. Oh, man, that's funny. I wanted to learn a few more things. about Who was at Berkeley um, when you got to Berkeley? Like, who, who was some... Was Marvin Smitty Schmidt and all of them there? He had just left okay. a little bit after his reign, a little bit after Kevin Eubanks' reign. Okay. I was in a time of like Mark Whitfield, Layla Hathaway, okay. uh, Antonio Hart, um, Jobin, uh, 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 I can't think of his name right now. Killer player, man. His name will come to me. J- yeah, we used to see. I don't know his what, real what name because we call him Question Mark because he had a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> what instrument do you play? Saxophone, tenor oh. sax, man. Oh wow, killer. 
Oh, not it's a, a J in there somewhere. Mm. Okay. You probably wouldn't know him. He's okay. not like that known, but he's woo. He's a killer player, yeah. man. And we'll, um, there's a uh, what's his name? Um, who else was around that time? Uh, drama. You, I can't think of nobody's name, man. I need some more coffee or something. <laughs> what? What? Um, Walter Beasley was there. Was okay. was around? Was around that, yeah. that era? Um, 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 Delphio Marsalis. Oh wow! Was around that era. Okay. Ella. Cyrus Chestnut. Cyrus, okay. Yeah, me and wow. Cyrus, we were like the same class. Oh, wow. We took this from the same teachers. We both took from Donald Brown and Dean Earl. Now, were you were you glad that you chose Berkeley? I mean, did you really get it? Absolutely. I, I I have dreams of going back to Berkeley, you know, and, and anytime I get a gig in Boston or whatever, I have to go by the campus and walk through and walk through the practice rooms yeah. and remember that was me, just like the neighborhood where I live in. You've been in my house. Yeah, yeah. I grew up in that neighborhood as a kid, and I played in the basement that I own now as a kid. So it's surreal. Really? I see I little kids. That. I see little kids out on their little motorbike. He think he doing something, and that yeah. was me. It's like that yeah. was that wow. was me. That's you know. Man. Yeah. So and you and you say when you were at Berkeley, you you your major was uh production and engineer. Okay. And that, I was going to ask you why did you choose that, but I think you mentioned that because I ran because because it, it, it was the only thing that you had to be in that major to get. Oh, okay. So I, I I majored in that, but then I still took all the conducting classes. I still took all the arranging classes. I still wow. cook. The only difference between a performance major is you got two lessons a week instead of one. Okay. So did you did you like Boston? Yes, yes, yeah. I love Boston. I still thought maybe maybe not now, but even then. Then I think Boston had the best fireworks. Fireworks, they had better fireworks. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine Boston having yeah. better fireworks than DC. And I love fireworks. Yeah. I've been on. I've been uh, to Berkeley one time, and uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. I loved it at Berkeley. Man, I love. I, I I loved the experience of having so many people come from different musical places. Yeah. See, I mean, if I. If I come off out of my mouth with Patti LaBelle or Peebo Bryson or George Clinton, everybody around here know exactly who I'm talking about. Yeah. But now you go to Boston and you're not you're not talking about, you know, the Bangles and mm -hmm. <laughs> Phil Phil Collins and all yeah. this stuff. It's like that stuff I never even heard. Don't know who they talking about. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and they coming from a whole nother place. Then you got this guy from Greece coming over, talking about one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. It's like, how do you feel that? It's yeah. like, not just like this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and then, so it's just yeah. having an exchange, an exchange and being in the melting pot with cats that were equally yeah. curious about yeah. different aspects of music, you know? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of great uh, musicians go through that. University. Yeah, I yeah. loved I yeah. loved that incubation period. So you started gigging in the, in in Boston. Once oh yeah, you yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Cyrus did too. Carla yeah. Cook and all these kind of all the kids, these kind of guys. We done the same kind of gigs. Connolly's man, Cyrus would would have to pay a station wagon cab to hold his Fender Rhodes and pack it up in the car <laughs> and get there set up and do that and play Connolly's. For, I ain't even gonna tell you how much money. Wow. You know, but he would do it religiously every week. And mm -hmm. he'd be killing it too. But we getting that experience, man, yeah, and, and yeah, playing yeah. and learning. Wow. They always had the wise barbecue potato chips at the bar. Like, <laughs> that's why I was So when you graduated Berkeley, you decided to come back to the DMV? Or no, not exactly. <clears throat> um when I graduated Berkeley, I had gotten my first gig with Pieces of a Dream. Okay. So you with a national touring band. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so that took me everywhere. Yeah. By the time I was in my mid twenties, I had two passports because I had all yeah. the stamps filled wow. up. We went everywhere, and then pieces turned into other things. Yeah. Part yeah. of the tour for the yeah. Bill Withers thing, yeah. and that took me to Phyllis Hyman, and this yeah. took me yeah. to yeah. all these different people. Wow. So yeah. I was—I really wasn't living anywhere for a long time. I, you so, know, I was just on the road a lot. So did you ever have a day job? A day job? No, I never had a day job. The, the only day job, no, no, I take that back. Me Dave and I both worked me, me, at Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, Dunkin', okay. Together. Really? For about maybe a month or two. <laughs> okay. We had fun. It was it was fun. We both had a lot. I wish I had a picture of us in our uniforms. What man. is it like, man, to make a living just doing, like, music? Be, even before you start producing and, and doing the engineer stuff. But you were, you were making money just playing, performing. Mm -hmm. What is that life like? 
a lot of people don't know that that people actually can make a living playing music. Like, yeah. did you did you did you have money in the bank? I've never had money in the bank. I still don't have money in the bank. <laughs> I have things, and I have you know I yeah. have reserves for what I need yeah. for what I yeah. need. But in terms of built up capital and yeah. retirement fund yeah. and yeah. all this kind of stuff, I never I never kept money. I never held on to money. Okay. You know, um, for me. It's about your lifestyle and the things that you, the taste you have and the things that you learn to enjoy it. Because I was afforded an opportunity to travel the world mm -hmm. and to be, to see a lot of things, then I developed a lot of tastes and things that I love. And yeah. then, okay, well, if you like this, this is how much it costs. Yeah, yeah. But it was never like, I never had anything where, you know, I don't. I don't have to have my hot tub. <laughs> yeah. If something happened to it, if something did happen to it, it got it had some patches and the leak couldn't get nobody to fix it. It's big, it's taking up space, you can't give it away, you can't you gotta pay to move it. It's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And my pen the pinball machine yeah, the same yeah, way. Yeah. Nothing bad happened. My life didn't didn't yeah. go to ruins <laughs> yeah. because I didn't have it. I enjoyed just still yeah. enjoyed other things. Yeah. But damn, when you fix it up and you get it fixed, it's like, oh man, I remember yeah. how nice this was. I remember the look you had on your yeah. face the yeah. first night we was in yeah. there. You yeah. like, man, yeah. man, <laughs> this is wonderful. Well, you know, it's funny because you know? it's like you could do this. This is possible. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And you know, and I'm. When I when I met you, you were living you were in a, in an apartment over yeah. in a in a yeah in, in, in Silver Spring. Plaza yeah and so you know and then you always got a it's like on working on something you got a new gadget yeah yeah or something. yeah <laughs> something that I don't, yeah. Yeah. don't nobody know enough about that events. <laughs> so on this first part, I got a couple more questions. Okay, and then we are gonna get into the real part of the interview. I thought, <laughs> I thought we was back. we was done. No, no, we got a lot to talk about, my brother. Okay, okay. Um, a couple, I got about three more questions. Okay. One thing I noticed about you that you have this love for people. Like you I love, love it when people say, "Can I ask you a question?" And I say, "Another one." <laughs> 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 yeah, but you you love people. You, you you some of them. Yeah, but I mean, you you seem to be a very. Are you? Are, would you say you're an extrovert? No. You're mm -hmm. introvert. Either I would say neither. Okay. Neither. But you love people, right? Generally, if, if given a reason to, I like to be given a reason to. <laughs> got you, got you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you love um, good people. Yeah, and and I stay fairly insulated. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, people. A lot of people know me, and a lot of people see me because of my profession, because of me yeah. being out. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember who all these people are all the time. Or if you say, you know, so and so. If I see him or I hear yeah. him play, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that yeah, cat. But yeah, I, yeah. I'm not thinking of the name or whatever. So a lot more people know me than I yeah. know people, of course, especially now Facebook land. You know, it's like yeah. I got. 10, the reason why I ask you like, that there's because there's no way I know ten thousand people. <laughs> yeah, but you are you have a always have this serious look, like you like you're like you you you're a scientist, like you got that scientist look. Yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah, but. <laughs> But like so, when we play like in Westminster, Westminster, I call it Westminster. All black people say yeah, Westminster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minister in it. <laughs> I could tell, man, you really enjoy those people. Oh yeah. And I mean, I, I when we play there, man, I, I, I just, it just, you know, like you'll do. Okay, I'm gonna do this gig, uh, you know. But you, you really enjoy playing there because of the people. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah, you so. take one of those gigs over yeah, five other yeah, gigs. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, <laughs> or you take that at 150 salary of yeah, another yeah, gig yeah, because yeah, you're yeah. going to have so much fun yeah. and you're going to walk away empowered by the people and them empowered by you. Yeah, no doubt. You know? Yeah. All right. And you just mentioned this. I wanted to ask you this. I said, you are not shy about treating yourself to the best that life has to offer. Whether it's food, music gear, pinball machines, utensils, etc. <laughs> Man, is, he got forks and everything. Oh, it's awesome. What is your philosophy? I mean, is it is it is it? Would and you kind of briefly talked about that, but you treat yourself good. Is that what it is? Yeah, I should treat myself the best. They tell you that on the flight, man. When the flights start to go down, put your mask on first, yeah. and then put it on the kid, right? Yeah, yeah, or the sir. Bible say, take the beam out your own eye, right? Yeah, yeah. Then and then got... work on somebody else. <laughs> okay. So there are many that may disagree with me, but I feel that I treat others 
really, really well. And mm -hmm. I treat others kindly. I try to exhibit kindness and try to be fair and try to be nice to other people around me. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be that nice to other people outside <laughs> of me, I should treat at least have something left for me, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times it may just be a little secret thing, something that I do at 3 o'clock in the morning that nobody knows about, yeah. that nobody knows that I can have this much joy out of this little thing. Yeah. Or this t thankless job that if, when in magic, you may spend 10 years developing an ability to do something that if I do it really, really well, you don't even know anything's been done. So it's a thankless task, yeah. but just be, it's something about it that tickles me. It, wow. Yeah. And you can't say what, what's going, what tickles who, yeah. but I'm tickled by a lot of stuff. Wow. Right? So I try to treat myself as best as I can so that in, in turn... When you gotta go mess, you got some job stuff that comes around you. You're perfectly, I'm I'm cool. It's like I'm a, I'm gonna yeah. be all right in a, about two hours. I'm gonna be back at my house. <laughs> so you know I'll be at a go go at four o'clock in the morning. I'll be like in thirty minutes from now I'll be in my hot tub looking yeah. up at the moon. Wow. So it's no nothing that can annoy me. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's beautiful. Or you know if you you look forward to this one look, you have a solace. You have something to come back to. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Mm. You know, and then you get a massage chair, then you work out more because yeah. I'm gonna work harder because I'm gonna get in that massage chair. I'm a, and I use my pinball machines as a reward for myself sometimes. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna play any pinball till I finish this mix. Yeah. Some people think that you, like some people don't. They want to be married or want somebody. They want to die old and grow old. Some people, and some people are happy with themselves. Like you know, you see like a person that, I mean, not saying that you're not. In happy relationships, but you seem like you're very happy with with yourself, and and that you enjoy yourself. Yeah, I think along with everything else, like I said, even with if there's a period where I might not do magic for ten years, mm -hmm. I don't love it any less. I have a, I, I, I may miss it, or I may not even miss it because of some other things that I do. But then when I get back to it, it's like man, I'm really really affirming how much I really love this thing. But there's all, there's all these things, but there's only this many hours in a day, these yeah. many years in a lifetime. Another thing, that, and I want to ask you this. Most musicians are trying to be stars. They want to go, and, and you seem to say, I'd rather do, look up at the moon in my thing than try to be a big movie star, musician star. Did you make a conscious choice? To Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because you could be that. Well, very early on in my career, I was able to be next to stars, and I've been in some uncomfortable, uncomfortable positions. We're gonna talk stars. about some of that because, yeah, you, you, you know, meant, yeah, yeah, yeah. For instance, I, when I was, if when I was working with Eddie Murphy, you know, wow. you, this was in Eddie Murphy's heyday. Yeah, now that he's yeah. not still famous now, yeah, yeah. But when he was at his his yeah, height, yeah, his yeah. height, you know, he'd have us over his house. But you got to come in a gate, gate. To come there, you had to be let in and yeah. let out of his house. Yeah. And if you're in his house and you just decide you're going to leave, you can't leave till somebody push a button and let you leave. Wow. Yeah. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. But that's necessary for somebody like yeah. that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't want to be so famous that I've got to have other people check my mail or, or taste my food to be sure that somebody's not trying to kip, kidnap somebody close to me because they yeah. think I got yeah. this much money, that yeah. much yeah. money, or whatever. I want to be <laughs> yeah. be under the radar. Yeah, got gotcha. you. know, I want to be able to go somewhere and and yeah, just go somewhere and enjoy it. Yeah, without and and put it on the shelf and come back to it. Yeah, if you're too famous, you can't do that. And yeah. I enjoy that part. Okay, too much. Wow. That you answers know? that question. <laughs> yeah. Plus, if I gather a lot of something or whatever, it's nobody's business. I don't want anybody to know it. But as soon as you get famous, everything you do is everybody's business, you know? I said I had a couple more questions, but here's... It's okay. Yeah. I got time. You remind me of the late, great Andrew White in that both of you have your own calligraphy. Mm. <laughs> how, how did you become so meticulous with with... Not just writing, but pretty much everything you do. Mm -hmm. But that's one thing I noticed about you and Andrew White. Y'all have your, like, like you take pride in writing your name. Sure. And sure. that's a yeah. heavy thing, man. I mean, how, where, did that, where did you get that from? I like nice things. Gotcha. You know, if if able to afford it, this Deer Park is cool. I'll drink it if I'm thirsty. I'll drink, any, <laughs> I'll drink out the top if it's thirsty. Yeah. But if I have the money, 
and I can afford it and it's available, I'm going to drink Fiji. Okay. Because gotcha. I've tasted the difference between this and Fiji. Uh -huh. And I like I personally like it and it feels softer. And when I can, that's a, you know, that's something that I can treat myself to. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and to my closest friends and my guests, I want to turn them on to that. Yeah. If I can. And yeah. the people that I don't know or haven't proven themselves to be there yet, they're going to get, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. But I like to have reserved something special for me. My silverware, like you said, you mentioned even like the plates and stuff. Like yeah, I get yeah. certain plates from certain <laughs> places. It's because I want to buy stuff one time. Okay. And I want it to last and it to be timeless. Wow. Yeah. You know, I don't want to like keep replacing and keep replacing. And so did you did you consciously make a choice to write your name? With, with and, and all that with well when I was little I studied some calligraphy I, okay. I got the little books and okay. you know I got a calligraphy pen and you know and you, and you like that when you learn how to do it no music notation and with the music notation well they they had that at Berkeley but I already knew how to do it by the time they taught it the only thing I learned at Berkeley was you know and you just learn by error how to keep the pen off the ruler so because if you touch the ruler then the ink's going to spread to the paper and wow. if you not there if you do it this way it's great you, you know you just get it's a feel thing mm. but i've always been able to do it and do it quickly but then to really really do it on onion skin paper with the with the calligraphy pen and you make a mistake you got to actually scratch it out and all that mm. it's just something to the craftsmanship of that that i yeah. that i enjoy that makes me special makes me unique that Okay, you can't just spit this in the machine and spit it out, and it looks like everybody else's chart. Yeah, you wow. know. Last question for this session. Okay, I promise. <laughs> I'm enjoying uh, this, man. Do you have a uh, a philosophy that you live by, or a musical or life philosophy that you that you that you live by? I say rather than make a living, live a making. Mm. Love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. and in two words, I mean, for all of my all of my students and people that come through me uh, or come to my studios for whatever for whatever reason in order to further themselves, it's not like really complicated. It's just mm -hmm. a two word thing. Just yeah. get better. That's mm. all you're seeking to do. Wow. It doesn't have to be where this guy is, or it doesn't have to be you know through any set set of parameters, but. I know I'm better than I was yesterday. I'm, I play yeah. differently. I can play differently than I played 20 years ago, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to. Wow, yeah. You know, I yeah. could have stopped when I was 14 years old. I could have stopped at that level and still functioned and played gigs and made the same amount of money. Why bother? Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, there's something that the more and more that you increase the things that you that you that you know about and i learned the same kind of things on a construction level man in my house man my boy Des, mm -hmm. he taught me a lot of stuff my father being a, a, a building houses and stuff i learned a lot of you know technical things of construction and stuff that now when i own a house now it's like you know yeah. i'll pay somebody to do this i'll pay somebody to do this certain things i don't mess with but in terms of like Okay, I need a camera rig, and I need it to point like here. How can I, I'll make? I'll go to Home Depot and craft something and make something yeah. before I'll buy a unit if I can. Yeah, yeah. Because wow. it's fun to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fun. It's fun. And you got that kind of mind. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, after you work on pinball machines, you you feel like you can do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's a lot, lot of. <laughs> well, man. Well, we whew, we just getting started, man. You didn't gave us a whole. Uh, it's like, wow. I'm full, but, man. I got a lot yeah, of living. <laughs> yeah. So, well, there it is. Uh, the the wonderful Mr. Vince Evans. He said, get better. Get better. Get better. All right, now. <laughs> so, um, we're going to take a break, and we're going to see you on the other side. This is a conversation in jazz with the incredible, wonderful Mr. Vince Evans. And a terribly handsome Mr. Antonio Parker. <laughs> and if you don't believe it, he'll tell you so himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Woo.